You know, so we started reviewing all our uh, footage for this year, and there was one video that stuck out, you know, Ken from the show, he uh, is just diehard, passionate, loves his hunting, and you know what, every single year, there's a group of guys, all his buddies, they get together, and normally one of them always gets a moose draw in Northern Ontario, and they all meet up and do exactly what everyone wants to do, you know, you want to get all your buddies together in camp, and just have a week, shut your brain off, hunt hard, pick on each other, tell stories, jokes, and you know, if this encompasses everything, everything we wanted in the show, it's it's about family, it's about friends, it's not about it's not about going to a ranch and shooting the biggest moose you've seen or anything like that. It's just straight up wanted to be with your friends and family and just just watch how this is. Like you can tell they're best buddies. Twenty years doing the same thing every year. Like it's like Christmas for these guys and you know what, they, they got up on a really good bowl and had a really cool shot and it's a fantastic, just a fantastic story to tell. Hope you enjoy it. Dirt Nap TV is brought to you by Scree Canada. This episode of Dirt Nap TV brought to you by these fine sponsors. Making our way back to the Canadian border, back into uh, Ontario. Hopefully be there in another four or five hours. Danny, you should put a hat on if I'm video. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we had a long drive up last night. Uh, it was about a 22 hour haul from southern Ontario to northern Ontario. We basically head through the states and uh, arrived at Sioux Lookout last night. I think it was around. Uh, seven eight o'clock so good haul we had uh, no uh, no incidents or nothing like that so now we're just getting ready to head into the woods it's it's go time so we're in Sioux Lookout we're uh, just getting uh, our minnows and I thought it was kind of quirky that the uh, the place that sells minnows in town is also the uh, skate sharpening guy all the hockey equipment, everything. That, only in Canada can you get your minnows at a hockey store. All right, we're on our way in. Last leg of the journey into where we're actually gonna be camping. the uh, first morning of the hunt. The sun's just breaking up over the trees. We had a good hard frost last night so we're hoping that somebody gets some action this morning. Um, I've chose just to basically walk down a trail. One of the guys says was pretty decent in years past. We're hunting in tall timber where the, there's no open cuts. A lot of the old cuts have, have grown in, so yeah, it's basically just walk and call and hopefully get something going and work up on it. All right, we got to be honest here. Can anyone wear a hat like that? Like, only Ken. He knocked that hat out of the park. I pick on him for it. I think he likes it. But he wears the hell out of that hat, doesn't he? <laughs> Bird out. 
on the road here. Let me just go up and see if we can get a shot. Looks to be a spruce. Northern chickens is what they call them up here. Flew up into a tree. We'll see if I can get a shot at it. Clear shot at it, anyways. Hopefully, it stays in there. All right, I gotta know. How many of you guys have wasted a $30, $35 arrow on a chicken? Guilty. At least he hit it. Uh, I think last time I took a shot, my arrow went about 3,000 yards away and never to be found again. Next time it's seen, it'll be an artifact 3,000 years from now, but give him credit. I would have missed. Beautiful little birds. Good eating, too. This segment brought to you by Scent Relief. This changes everything. set up um, in an old cut. There's a little bit of a swamp off to my left where I could shoot probably 70 yards. The cut road is in front of me and cut on the other side, maybe about 100 yards and then all bush after that, virgin timber. I was in here yesterday morning, heard a cow call, two calls actually. Um, on the opposite side, fresh set of tracks coming in. We've got to be around here, so just a matter of waiting and hoping they answer the call. The wind's good. If they're in the deep timber, it's blowing right in my face, so hopefully. Okay, we've been here about an hour and a half. And I've made four sets of calls over that time, no response. Let's go check out some other spots. definitely raining over there. So I just want to give you a couple of examples. Uh, a lot of times when we're out moose hunting, what we look for. 
Um, some of the main thing obviously are footprints and, and droppings. But uh, when you get into cuts or areas where they're going to be feeding, this is a lot of stuff we look for. You know, like all these branches here have the leaves stripped off. And you can see from year to year where they've actually nipped off a lot of the branches. I mean, that's, that's their food. So this is here another great example of moose habitat, what they eat. Right? We have all these stems here that are stripped. The leaves are all gone and the tops are all chewed off. I mean, this is, this is what a moose eats. This is all their, their favorite stuff. And if you were to, to look at a lot of these plants all in behind me here, you'll see that they're all nipped off right around the same area. That's one of the main things we look for. Uh, a couple of the other things we look for are scrapes. And I'll show you a couple examples of those next. Okay, so here's an example of some of the scrapes that we look for. Okay, you'll see a lot of these trees here, how they're all broken and, and all the branches are twisted down and thrashed. And that's, that's the moose coming in. And just like a deer, he's making a rub, showing his territory uh, off to other bulls in the area. I mean, we have one right here. This one's tore up pretty good. A lot of times it could be just as subtle as a few branches. They, they make a quick scrape and, and then carry on to the next one. So when we're walking our trails in, uh, food, the leaves and stuff that they're eating, and these scrapes are, are a great example of moose habitat. Okay, so those two things that I just pointed out, the trimmings on the trees and the thrashing of the trees, those are two of the things that we look for um, and the third is obviously water. Uh, moose, big animals, cannot survive without a lot of water. Most of the time when we set up, a lot of these, these are, are, are old cuts. Um, we specifically look for old cuts that butt up to water. So a cut like this has a ravine in the back where it drops off into a small lake, a little canyon with a creek or river running through it. Uh, those are all things that, uh, those three things put together create excellent moose habitat and that's what we look for when we're out moose hunting all right well i gotta be honest you know i i elk hunt and i watched that a few times and it all makes sense right you know those guys hunt a lot of moose and know a lot of it but i don't know to look for the tips of branches chewed off or stripped or any of the rubs and scrapes and stuff like that so i learned something i guess uh i guess he better invite me down there for a moose hunt and teach me right because I keep bringing him over here trying to get him an elk, so fair trade. This segment brought to you by Elite Archery, makers of the world's most shootable bows. Okay, we're just sneaking in to our stands. Woohoo! -wee. You know that feeling. There is nothing, nothing better than that, right? And you can hear it in Ken. He's uh, sounds like he's a little winded there, but this is the moment. This is what you've been out there, however many days now, ten days, eight days. It's on. Can they pull the trigger though? We'll find out. Okay, head down and see if you can get close. 
close enough. As you can see, you know, Ken didn't want to walk up on uh, right behind him there. And a lot of the time you get your cameraman there and more times than not, it buggers up everything. But he hung back and unfortunately, you know, didn't get the, the actual shot on video. But, you know, 12 yards, you have a big moose. That's a big moose staring, staring at you. He's already drawn, opens up a little and he just piles them, center punches them. You know, that shot can go really good or can go bad. Uh, more times than not, it goes good if you have a well-placed shot and, you know, Danny's been shooting for years and that's, that's their neck of the woods. They know what they're doing, you know? Kill him, buddy, kill him. Oh, that sounded good. Oh! Whoa! 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 I can see blood pumping. Yeah, he center punched that thing and it was leaking. Whoa! Oh yeah, blood pumping. This segment brought to you by Glory Knock, Lighted Knocks. Okay, so we came in this morning. Seen a bull come down off this ridge here. Um, and actually, we thought it caught us. We were, we were able to duck down, and it had a cow, and it was kind of mulling her around, as you can see from the video. So, Danny snuck up the trail here while I stayed back in video, and it came right up to him. He took a shot. I don't know how far. I haven't had a chance to talk to him yet, but uh, when it was running away, I could see the blood pumping out, so... He's going back to get his son, Damon. The young kid, we want to get him some tracking experience, so. And then, uh, yeah, we'll track it up and hopefully find a dead moose at the end of the blood trail. How far was he when you shot? I was right there. I was gonna say. I was hoping he was gonna turn. Turn. Like was Just before that, I'm puffing, eh? And you know when he let out that big roll? Yeah. I thought maybe he winded us, because I hit the puffer, and it was coming right down. You can see the blood in the sand. It actually sucks it in a bit, makes it look pink, but I can follow it right up to where the boys are. Let's see where it cross the log here. All kinds of blood. <laughs> Out of boy, Denny. Who's down? Well, I'm worried about that front end shot. We'll get him good. The arrow probably still sticking out of him. Be careful. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's a nice bull. That's a damn nice bull. When he was coming down the hill there, I'm like, good. oh, he's got nice paddles. Yeah, he did look good. Yeah, that makes me happy. Any bull makes you happy. Yeah.
but don't have to be big. That's Such awesome. Big animal. They're just amazing. Just brutes. See what I mean by the front chest, how yeah. wide they are. Yeah. That back foot always steps inside because yeah, their inside's a lot smaller. Well, and now, now she the work again. begins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There we go. Thanks, Scotty. <laughs> no longer is he the keeper of the tag. No more jokes. No more back rubs. No more. <laughs> no well, there you have it. You know, again. This is everything that we stand for. It's, it's your kids out there, your best buddies, your friends, doing what you love, putting food on the table, and how do you beat it? It's the best thing in the world. It's what I live to do. That's what we all live to do. It's second to none. I get, uh, I get shivers there, you know. My kids are still growing, not quite big enough to get out there with me, but I just watch, you know, all these guys out there with their kids, and I'm just dying dying to get mine out there too. So I'd like to ask you guys all to give us a like and follow on Facebook and Instagram if you have it. And all these episodes that you watch, if you head on over to our YouTube, we show them all a few weeks after it airs on TV here. So, you know, give us some support and we're always doing giveaways, you know, we give away bows and camo and all sorts of other stuff. So, you know, if you had no head on over there and give us a like and a follow, enter into some of these draws and just keep up to speed with what we're doing, you know. Uh, share some of your stories with us. We're always always looking for some cool stories to share with everyone and like to hear your stories too. So be sure to check it out and we'll see you next week on Dirt Nap TV. This episode of Dirt Nap TV brought to you by these fine sponsors.